All right, Dexcom G6 versus G7. A lot of you may not be on Dexcom, which is fine, but I think you should still look at this video because you may might be, and you will ask that question. Is Dexcom good? What is the difference between Dexcom G6? What is the difference from G6 from G7, right? Well, if you're ready to upgrade your diabetes management experience, I will dive into the latest advancements from Dexcom today, which is a game changer for those seeking more discreet, convenient, and reliable CGM, which is continuous glucose monitoring technology. Let's explore how the G7 compares to the trusted G6 and how these innovations could actually make a real difference in your day-to-day -day blood sugar monitoring. Stick around, why? Because you're gonna find out why this upgrade might be just what you have been waiting for. And some people actually prefer to stay with G6, and we'll talk about that too. Now, as an endocrinologist, I have witnessed firsthand the challenges that come with managing diabetes, the painful finger sticks, right? It's not just about keeping your blood sugar levels within a specific range, but it is about finding a solution that fits into your lifestyle, because it's a lifelong disease, right? To make the management process as stress-free as possible that's my goal for my patients and i'm here to share with you the key differences between g6 and g7 now let's talk about the lifespan right so both g7 and g6 dexcom sensors are pretty much they're gonna last you 10 days this means that users can wear the sensor for up to 10 days before needing to replace it with a new one now, having said that, it doesn't last 10 days for everybody. And for those of you who are frustrated that because they don't last 10 days every time, you should not throw them away, keep them together, and call Dexcom and say, Hey, your sensor that you said to Zena last 10 days did not last 10 days. Can I please get an E1? And although hold times are kind of quite long, but I think you can manage it and get your sensors back that have failed on you earlier than expected. Number two... Dexcom G7 sensor is pretty much marketed as the smallest Dexcom sensor yet. So small, it's more discreet for wearing the sensor for the G7. And it's going to increase your comfort and reduce the visibility for those of you who are concerned about their looks. Number three, all-in-one sensor and transmitter. Like it used to be like sensor and transmitter separate for G6. What with G7 though? It is all-in-one design where the sensor and transmitter are integrated into a single unit, which is nice. Why? Because it simplifies the setup process for users and you only need to insert one component rather than two separate ones, etc., etc. But the Dexcom, unfortunately, requires users to insert both the sensor and the transmitter separately. For those people who are used to it, they don't mind it at all, but if you're new to it, you may want to start with something simpler. Now let's talk about the warm-up time, right? That can be annoying because once you get used to something, you know, look of it can be a problem, such as electricity. I mean, think about, you know, your power goes out and you'd be all go nuts. Well, well, if you didn't have electricity until last couple hundred years, I don't know, when, maybe 100, 120 years, right? So whatever it may be, don't count me on that the number of years. But if your Dexcom is waiting two hours, like in this case, G6, it may be painful to see what your blood sugars are, you know, because you're used to see it all the time. Well, G7, you only have to wait 30 minutes after insertion for the sensor for it to warm up and start providing some accurate readings for you. But like I said, G6 requires a longer Warm-up time, two hours. That can be pretty long for a lot of people. Now, let's talk about some grace, grace period. The Dexcom G7 offers a 12-hour grace period beyond the 10-day lifespan of the sensor. So hopefully that will last. This means that even if the sensor reaches the end of its use or intended use, users can have an additional 12 hours, like, for example, if you're on the go or so, before needing to replace it. Now, again, this can be very helpful if you need some extra time to get your replacement, if you're out of it, or whatever it may be. Especially in this day and age, I mean, uh, in this day and age, it's crazy how insurance companies 
are making everything so difficult to get these sensors to patients and blame doctor's offices for everything. And But in reality, insurance companies and the third-party companies are lacking so much in keeping up with the paperwork that they need to communicate and they typically don't and that creates a lot of frustration in patients. How about usability during pregnancy? Like both Dexcom G7 and G6 are safe for during pregnancy because it's an important part of your life where you have to have perfect numbers, but both of them are good enough. So whatever flows your boat, whatever your insurance covers. Now, what about water resistance? Both G6 and G7 are designed to be water resistant, allowing users to wear them while swimming, showering, etc participating in other water-related activities. Although it's not recommended to be in the water for hours and hours because then, you know, what water does, especially salt water, to anything, it will probably not let the Dexcom stick. And it's water resistant up to 2.4 meters, which means that you don't want to go for a deep dive. Number eight, alerts, right? G7 and G6, they offer customizable alerts to notify users of high and low blood sugar levels. So if you're annoyed with, you know, getting constant alerts, you can definitely go to settings and make some adjustments that is practical for your preferences and your lifestyle. Both sensors will provide you urgent low alerts and there are some things that you cannot change. For example, you cannot tell the sensor or don't ever tell me that my blood sugar is low. That's just not gonna happen. And you can customize the alert schedule as well so that you can set specific times for receiving alerts or adjust the frequency of alerts based on the activity level or your personal preferences. Now, both sensors are supported by dedicated mobile apps, but they're two different apps. So don't get confused. The XCOM G6 app is different than G7 app. So if you're transitioning from G6 to G7, you will have to change your app as well. But the good thing is they're both are gonna be on your smartphone. For those who are still using flip phones, you will have a receiver to see your numbers. Now, Clarity app will be another app. I don't know why they have so many different apps, but that's what it is. You know, they have the XCOM Clarity app that will provide you to connect with your healthcare professional. We get a lot of trouble sometimes, especially with our some of our patients, uh, let's put it that way, who are not very tech savvy and that will become sometimes a problem. But Dexcom assumes that everybody is born in the computer age, so go figure. How about wear location? Both sensors can be worn on the body, of course, but I mean, like, when it comes to wear to wear, G6 was more like the abdomen, G7 is more like the arm. Now, people use in different parts of their body, but it's not been studied. And the problem is that it may work for one person or may not work for the other person. For kids, it's preferred for the Botox uh, area if they are not gonna able to keep that on their arm just because you know how they are running around, climbing walls, etc. They're gonna give you some real time monitoring experience, but they are remember they're Bluetooth. Like if you're like my mom, she will just leave her phone like downstairs or upstairs and never look at her phone like for 24 hours. Uh, that's not a good idea. You need to be close to your phone and you need to be able to look at your phone to see what's going on. If you are totally phone averse person, you may wanna get your receiver that is dedicated for your glucose readings. Now, some people reported to me that they like G6 better than G7 for accuracy, etc. There is no data to support that, but guess what? If they like it that way, they can stick that way. You can always switch to G6 as well if you want to although they may discontinue G6 in the near sometime soon, so we don't know. So don't get your hopes up that you will stick with the G6 rest of your life. G6 also is more compatible with the insulin pumps. So if you're on certain insulin pumps that work with Dexcom, G6 is still preferred model compared to G7, although it's a process and if you're watching this video a few months later or a few years later, this will probably not be true. 
Emerald Active G7 will be compatible with everything, but you should double check with your pump company to see if the G7 will be compatible with your pump if you are planning to switch. Again, G7 is smaller, faster warm-up time, all-in-one design, making it pretty attractive option for especially new users of advanced glucose monitoring systems. But thanks for watching. I appreciate you. And please remember to share and like this video and subscribe if you have not done already. So bye-bye. Hello, everyone. Thanks for watching. And this year we are announcing for 2025 January start a diabetes reversal program and we need your input so go to diabetesreversalformula.com and sign up be a thought leader give us your recommendations how to create this program so we can beat diabetes together see you later